Greetings everyone and happy Saturday. Um, I'm not going to talk too long today because it's a busy weekend and nobody wants to be sitting on social media. Um, you guys should be out enjoying the sunny day after all the rain we've had in California. The rest of the country I think you guys are just getting snowed in. Um, <laughs> but today I just wanted to chat really quickly about negativity. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Hi, hello. Hi boo. Um, Martin, hi. So I want to talk about negativity today. And this is uh, a little bit of a discussion on a blog I just wrote, but a little bit um, more than I wrote in the blog too. Um, so you guys can check out the blog if you want. The link is up top. Um, and I, I want to talk about how negativity, we can use it. Hey Kim, live again. <laughs> you got us. Um, how we can use it to work for us instead of being, you know, a slave and a prisoner of our negativity. Um, because negativity, hey Brie, um, Dylan, hi. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, negativity is something that is a fact of life, right? And yet we grow um, up in this society uh, sort of being programmed and taught to think that it's something we have to hide. I know for me, hey Eva, thanks for joining. I know for me, um, I spent my life trying to mask the fact that I ever felt anything at all, good, bad, or indifferent. And then even once I started to come out of that and I started to, um, hey Shannon, I started to embrace my emotions, I still felt like I needed to hide, you know, when I felt bad. I still didn't want to tell people, you know, I'm angry or I'm pissed or I'm negative or I don't want to play today. Um, that's the big one. I, I feel like when I would wake up with the mindset of like, I don't want to do this today, that it was like this bad thing and that I was a quitter and I was a drama queen and that somebody was going to have all these thoughts about me. And what I wasn't realizing was that negativity is a fact of life, positive and negative. All this reality is, is, is just composed of dualities, opposites. We can't have one without the other. Without darkness, light wouldn't exist, right? Without negativity, positivity couldn't exist. So we have to learn to embrace, and that's like the biggest part of the work that we do, is learning to embrace those things that we just want to run screaming away from, right? Because we've all heard the term negative Nancy, right? Nobody wants to be a freaking negative Nancy, right? I don't want to be that person that's like the naysayer on everything, and oh, I don't want to do it, and all I want to do is complain. So what that ended up doing was tricking me into this, this belief that, I had to hide that part of myself and, and deny that part of myself. And it's just, it's a really, really um, unhealthy way to live. Hug your chaos, that's right, Kim. <laughs> um, so there's, the Rinpoche monks are, you know, a line of monks basically from birth and they, they are given the title and the name Rinpoche when they are born, basically. It's like at birth they are recognized as being of this, this same spirit uh, incarnating and this same energy. And they are some of the wisest and most spiritual people that walk the planet of, in Buddhism. And one of the quotes that you can find here is, we all experience negativity, the basic aggression of wanting things to be different than they are. We cling, we defend, we attack, and throughout, there is a sense of one's own wretchedness, and so we blame the world for our pain. This is negativity. Right? Think about that for a second. This is negativity. So, Corgi, shh. <laughs> We, so it, it, what they're saying is that we create our own negativity, right? Because in our mind, things should be different. I shouldn't have to do this. I don't want to do this. We're not accepting what we have to do. I don't want to go to work. I don't think I should have to go to work. I don't think I should have to sit in an office. Bandit, out of the way. <laughs> um, what, whatever it is, I want what she has. Uh, I, why don't I have a good enough car? The bottom line is this. It's, it's wanting things to be different than they are right? And that's what creates our negativity. The problem is when we don't know how to use this thought process, right? The Corgi agrees. <laughs> when we don't know how to use this thought process as, as a meter and a gauge, can you sit? <laughs> 
um, to see where, because this can be a tool for us. Our, our negative thinking can be a tool. It can show us what we are not happy with in our life. It can show us what we don't like about our life, right? And we can then, if we are empowered and we are standing in our own, you know, self-truth and our own empowerment. All right, all these dogs right now want to just get in on this. Sorry, everybody. Um, if, if, if we are grounded and we are centered and we meditate and we can observe our thoughts, then we are able to look at that negative thinking and we are able to say, okay, here's this negative thought. I don't want to get up and go to an office every morning, right? I love my job, but I still don't want to be in an office, you know, 40 hours in a week, 40 plus hours in a week. I want my freedom. So now I can either focus on this thought and I can allow it to control my life. I can allow that to make me just miserable, aggressive, passive aggressive, bitter, right? And that's the path that unchecked negativity can go. Or I can stop and I can observe my thought and I can say, okay, I'm having this negative thought about my life. What am I going to do about it? Because guess what? Like the quote I just said, read you, like the quote I just read you. And so we blame the world for our pain. Think about that one. So I can sit around and I can blame the system. I can blame everybody else who doesn't have, you know, have to work for anybody, anybody who has their own freedom. I can blame the government. I could blame, I don't know. I, I, we can all find somebody to blame, right? But the bottom line is this, it's not their fault. Only we have the power to change our lives. Only we have the power to take action in our lives. So if we want to sit around and we want to think negatively and blame the world for our pain, we're going to stay in that. Or we can look at that negative thought and we can say, what am I going to do to change? And we can spend time with that and we can take action and we can lay out a plan and we can start taking steps to, to change that thing that brings up negativity in our life. Right? It's empowering and only we can do that. The problem is, is we are so conditioned to think that we have to sit around and we have to wait for someone else to do it for us. We sit around and we wait for someone else to give us what we want. And then we get mad at the people who are going after what they want. So think about that for a second, right? That's a very negative way of thinking and a very self-limiting way of thinking. Because nobody's going to give us what we want. That's just not the way the world works, you know? Sure, we can be idealistic and we should be like, hey, yeah, it should be great and everybody should have the opportunities they want. And don't get me wrong, idealistic thinking is great. I love idealistic thinking. But does it work in reality and does it get you to where you want to go? No, it does not. Straight up. So we, we have to begin to address this. And how do we do that? You guys know the answer. If you guys have seen any of my videos or read any of my articles, you know the answer to that. Meditation, yoga, breath work. That's how we do it. You know, the Dalai Lama says, the real task of a Buddha Dharma practitioner is to defeat this inner enemy. And the inner enemy is the mind and the negative mind. Right, guys? Are you relating? And it is amazing how prevalent such a thought is. Otherwise, if you let negative emotions and thoughts arise inside you without any sense of restraint, without any mindfulness of their negativity, then in a sense, you are giving them free reign. They can then develop to the point where there is simply no way to counter them. However, if you develop mindfulness of their negativity, then when they occur, you will be able to stamp them out as soon as they arise. You will not give them the opportunity or the space to develop into full-blown negative emotional thoughts. And those are the words of the Dalai Lama. My thought when I started studying Buddhism was if, if these spiritual, you know, we look at them as like these gurus of spirituality. It's like you're the freaking Dalai Lama, okay? You know, you're a Rinpoche monk. Like... <laughs> If you guys know about negativity, then I think I'm okay. I'm normal. So we can stop beating ourselves for having negative, beating ourselves up for having negative thinking. We can instead embrace it and use it to address what we don't like about our lives. We can hug our negative thinking. We can hug our chaos and we can turn our lives around. We can take action in place. <laughs> the freaking Dalai Lama. Yes. 
We can take action in place of negative thinking. Or, you know, we can choose the same old, same old, and we can keep going down the path of the twisty, turny, you know, rabbit hole of negativity. Yes, there's a dog nose in your camera. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and we can, you know, sit around and blame, blame the world for our problems. You know, there's a really fantastic Eckhart Tolle quote in this article. So if you guys haven't read it, check it out and see what he has to say about negativity. And I leave you guys with this. I want, I want you guys to think about one thing. If you approach each day as though every single thought and every single person, event, everything, if everything that crosses your path has a lesson for you, you can start to embrace even the challenges. If you can pause in the face of the most challenging circumstance or challenging person, and instead of looking at them and what, what's bothering you about what they're doing, instead looking at what you can learn from that, you'll have a whole new perspective on your day. And there's a Buddhist prayer I wanna leave you guys with to use as your mantra to practice all of this. May all circumstances serve to awaken our heart and mind, especially those circumstances I deem to be challenging. And may my life be of benefit to all beings. So try starting your day with that and try repeating that a few times a day. That's also in the blog. So please, if you guys haven't read it yet, check it out. Um, share this video if you loved it, if you found it valuable. Um, it's really just the way, uh, that's something else I don't like doing and something I'm addressing. I'm asking for help. Something else in opening my new year to be more vulnerable and ask my friends and loved ones for help. So love, like, share, thank you. Um, I really got, hope you guys had found this valuable and I hope that you have a fantastic weekend and I hope you found benefit in my words and I love you all. Thank you for the support and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.